Oh, can't do that. Oh, there we go. Okay. The stress is over. Here we go. Whew. Doug, you're welcome for the workout. Blue belt here from Mexico. Love it. Welcome. I am going to turn down the brightness here a little bit because we are very bright under those lights today. So let me crank down that stop. Uh, yeah, that looks better. Yeah, that looks better. Chris, that's a good question. I think we can start with that. But first, I got to hydrate a little bit. Almost didn't get this stream off. It had a little bit of technical difficulties with everything. But your opponent is right versus right. Peeled the post. I'm assuming that's a right hand post. Chris, do you want to clarify it for me? <clears throat> we have a right hand post, right? So I'm assuming right on right, you're saying he peeled posting with my left hand to his right side. Okay. So we're here. Uh, hand attacked with the dump. The cross gripping tile, say an argi, say a toe sheet, and I get in response to this. So he's peeling this and then he's hitting you with the dump to the right side, correct? Good evening, Chris Coley. Yes, okay, so Ryan posts, I'm posting on Ryan, and then he's dump cross grip on the even, punch it off. And then pull it past, try to set fire this. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much what you got going on. So every time you post, he's punching off. Right there is your problem, okay? Because that means your right hand isn't doing anything. If you know your partner is going to come across into that dump, you got to be active with this right hand. So slow down, just punch it off. Right here, you have to react, okay? I like a cross grip, but even if you can't get a grip, right? a solid forearm right across the shoulders, okay? He can only hold on to this for a few seconds, okay? So you're looking to attack that hand or at least that shoulder. So when he reaches for your tricep, go ahead, you can post that off, okay? He has to let go. You're not actually technically grabbing the D here. So when he peels that off, boom, you put that across as a shield and now he has to let go and you can still actively go for his sleeve. Because you have that good frame across his chest, okay? That's pretty much would be my go-to, right? If somebody's punching that off, I'm automatically throwing my right, boom, right across their chest. And just like I draw a bow, I push with my right, pull with my left, and I take that sleeve off. And then from there, I go right into attacking the wrist, and then, you know, from there, you do whatever judo you like to do. Doug, thank you. I'm glad you like it. It's a great little move. Okay, so let's, let's dive into this a little bit, okay, for everybody. Let's take a look at dealing with cross grips. Because even if you're a jiu-jitsu guy in here, a cross grip can be a real pain for everybody, okay? So if I'm right on right, and Ryan cross grips me, and I got my right before, and he's looking to do like this, say an obvious, he's looking to shake me behind you. Yeah, he's looking to shake you behind, and he's looking to do all these crazy things, right? Terrible news, terrible news. But... Super simple answer, okay? Heavy hands, heavy, heavy hands. Look, see the Project 2024 logo? This side of my chest, I'm inverted on the screen, this side of my chest. Hand always above it, never. Even if you bend, your hands stay above that logo. The biggest problem a lot of beginner grippers make is they keep their hands here and then they bend. And look, see how you can see my logos? Above my hands, hands are too low. Creates a parallel surface to the floor, makes it easy to grip. So always hands up. So when he cross grips me, my chest is raised. Okay, just like a Russian tie, right? My chest is raised. And then my hand comes across right into his elbow and I chop it. Even if I can't get a grip on the turn your shoulder away. Yeah, I can't get a grip on that heat. It's no problem. My forearm pressure here does enough. And look, a simple press, you can see that grip pop off because I have friction here on the arm. So when he sets that cross grip and he starts trying to shake and move. Just throw it over. 
Okay, nice and heavy. And then with not, not even using this hand, right? I can break that grip just here in my chest, boom. And now I can start attacking. I can throw my high right hand. I can come kill his sleeve. I can do so many different things. We're talking about that cross grip, okay? But again, hands up, he's gonna cross grip. I throw it over. Ideally, for me personally, I like to feed that collar because I'm like, oh, I'm golden here against anybody. You cross grip me, I'm in heaven. Because for me, once I feed this grip, he has to let go. No, keep it there. So all I'm doing right here is playing 100% defense. Okay, defense, defense, defense. Because the second he lets go of that grip when we're walking around, he's got no hands. Now is my time to blast him, okay? I can throw from anywhere in that position while he has that cross grip. His feet, turn that shoulder, keep moving to your left, out of the way of his throw, and then cut it with your chest, dropping that elbow into that arm, making this a very long distance, and then you can start to attack. And you'll notice, Ryan did it there without even thinking about it. It runs into another issue a lot of grippers have, where, no, here, where when you cut it, boom, he changes to the tricep, because he's gonna try to pull you in nice and tight, and you can't turn as a right hand, like I can't, I can't take a shot, because he's got my tricep, okay? What direction do you circle left on right? As a righty, you circle to your right. As a lefty, you circle to the left. Okay, so Ryan the lefty. Ryan the lefty here, okay. I always want to cut the corner. No, you stay there. So he's looking straight at me. I'm moving to this side all the time, making sure that his sleeve hand is too far from me, okay? If I stand here and I circle to my left, that hand can reach out and steal that sleeve. No, keep it. Now, I'm in a one-on-one -on -one fight where it's like a gunslinger, right? It's like, well, I have his sleeve, and now we can both throw, right? I can turn this way, he can turn as a lefty, and he can throw me. And then, while I'm stuck here, it's like, ah, oh, who's gonna throw their hand first? And a lot of times, you see guys go like hand-to-hand, -hand, and it turns into like a stepping game, where they try to step in and go big throw, and it's too dangerous. Don't do that, okay? It's fine off the grip, like every once in a while, steal the sleeve and go, no problem. But traditionally for us, and like the American judo style gripping, we always wanna circle this way and make sure that when I steal his front sleeve, that hand when he reaches for me, look, there's, he can't get there because he's gotta reach across his whole body. Now I can play defense, now I can steal it, steal both his, now I can start moving him in the direction I can throw, okay? The other thing it does is while I'm in here is it forces my opponent to circle with me and I can push that shoulder back and I can get him to stand square and now I can look to come in on all my judo because traditionally, right, he's looking at me here. When I circle, now when he circles, there. And see, now I can get him square to me so that my one step, which he might have all my entries, Super easy to do, okay? You can really get their shoulder to move and open up with a strong pose once they start circling to that side. Hey, Sasaki, nice. Glad you just made it. You just started, I almost didn't get the stream off. Had some technical difficulties. I was running around like a maniac. Super stressed. Jason, man, basics win championships. Forget the fancy stuff. Basics, basics, basics. All the time basics. That's why we're doing gripping. Because before you learn how to throw anybody, you gotta know where to put your hands on the gi. Okay, that's, that's the most important thing. You gotta grab the gi first, then throw. You can't throw without grabbing the gi. And if your hands aren't in the right spot, garbage. You're gonna look like an idiot. Nobody wants to look like an idiot. Okay? You wanna look like the cool guy in all the highlight reels. Caleb, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad everybody likes it. I love, I love passing on knowledge, I like helping people. Makes me feel good, like a feel good thing. But the other thing, I don't know if anybody saw it, but I released a YouTube video, I think like two, three months ago. How do you make your hand strong? You grab the gi as hard as you can all the time. Okay, one of my biggest complaints from my athletes, cadets all the way up through people trying to go to the games, they think they only got to grab the gi when they do randori, right? So they do things like this. Like, let's just do like an osoto chikomi here. So 
here. Don't just turn this little list. Yeah, I want the angle for the camera. Like, they're like loosey goosey here with their hand, and they're like, oh, look at that. I'm warming up, guys. I'm warming up. But the gi is like sliding through my hand, and like I'm not really holding it. We're like, when I do, hey, new member, love it, love it. William, thank you for the super chat. That shoulder push detail is amazing. Dude, it will be a game changer for you. When you learn how to like tap and go coaching left on right, and move your feet fast, oh, you'll stumble some people and you'll lay some people out, I'm telling you. But let's go back to that grip strength question. So. When you're doing a Chikomis and you're just like, here, here's why people don't have strong hands because they don't grab the key. Like when I do a Chikomis, like my hands are flat. I'm like, I stay mobile so I learn how to turn my hands on while keeping my arms and my body loose so that I can, I can create some power with my hands. I can get that whip going in here, right? Boom, boom, boom. You get that power and that snap while flexing. It's not this. It's like, it's not like, Oh yeah, hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, we're gonna train hard today, right? No, because you're not training hard now. Train hard, grab the gi, strengthen your hand. I'm telling you, it'll be a game changer. From the time you walk into the dojo, mindset changes, you grab the gi with authority. I do it so often, funny story, I do it so often that even till this day, since they stand there, I'll walk up to people and I'll just like, I just work my hands into the gi and I'll flex. It's just habit, right? Every time I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah. You feel that? Yeah, how's it going? And I'll just start having a conversation while digging my hands into the gi, right? If any of you guys are like Mike Tyson fans, he talks about this, right? He's like, oh, all he's trying to do in the back, like he's just grinding his knuckles into the glove, trying to get his knuckles as close to the edge as possible, right? and he's just working his hands. All I'm doing is practicing, working my hands into the gi, right? I'm just digging them in, I'm flexing, I'm turning those on. A lot of people are like, oh hey, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, we're just, we're doing judo. Man, not the same. That's why some people become Olympic champions and world champions in the same room where other international people train, but then they're average judo players. It's because of that effort put into every exercise all the time. Oh, dude, I'm so out of shape. I get exhausted during what you call me. People are always like, oh, you're so out of shape. I'm out of shape. That's right, Wayne. But yeah, the difference is, is you're always working. That's why when like, you go back into competitions, you'll be all set. Right? Championships are one in competitions, not in the dojo. Oh, Chris, great question, great question. Super basic gripping question, but so important, okay? Super important. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go what I like to call advanced basics, okay? Advanced basics. Meaning, we're gonna do some super simple stuff, but no matter how talented you are at judo, this is gonna be super hard to do. And you're gonna look at me like, that's it, that's it. But when you try to do it and focus on it while you're working out, it's going to be a challenge. So here we go. As a righty, okay, Ryan's shoulder here, uh, turn a little bit more extreme. Yeah. Ryan's shoulder here, his chest is facing this way. That's because, just like, oh, there you like, you say hi. There, see how he turns? Turn again, just keep going. He's rotating in that direction. Now, as a righty, when he's standing here, the farther he has to rotate, okay, the longer it gives me as uke to defend the position, okay? And that's where gripping comes into play. If his right foot is forward and he's a righty, that right shoulder, the farther it travels this way, the more at risk I am of getting thrown. The farther it travels the other way, the more able I am to throw. That sounded stupid, the more able. That sounded stupid. You get what I'm trying to say, though. I can't even think of how to put that. But the better my chances are of scoring, okay? So, rule of thumb, his shoulder never goes this way, his shoulder always goes that way. Unless you have control of the sleeve. Because then if he tries to turn that way, even from here, turn that way, turn that way. Yeah, turn that way. It don't matter. He's not going to be able to hit that throw as long as I have his speed. But we're, getting, we're going past the advanced bases. Bases. That shoulder is my key focus, okay? 
So nothing from this shoulder all the way down to his hand. This is my life right here. This is my life. Nothing. Nothing else matters. Okay, I'm looking at like grammatically correct though. Nice. Okay, but this is focus, 100% focus from your palm on the pec all the way down through. Okay, palm on the pec all the way down through. So I'm always circling to my left because that's what protects my sleeve hand. He wants to grab my sleeve because it helps him throw in that direction. Okay, as a righty, it's helping him to that side. So I want to walk to my left, shuffling my feet, using my left hand as my action hand. Right, my left hand is always looking for the sleeve, always looking for the post. From the shoulder down to the half hand, fair game. Okay, so defensive hand. Right hand, defensive, okay? It defends my sleeve, and it defends the collar. My left hand simultaneously attacks his sleeve and attacks his collar, okay? So as we're walking, I'm moving my shoulder back so that he can't grab while elongates. Okay, so just continue. Shoulder, reach for my sleeve. Shoulder back while catching, okay? Defense. Offense, walking, walking, offense, defense, okay, always protection. Try to not use two of your hands to do one job, okay? That's where he gets like advanced, but we're going basics. Always to the left, reaching, defending, okay? Now, so if I'm a righty circle to the left, against another righty, yes, you are correct. If you grip for too long, the ref can get pissed off. At what point do you settle for a grip and start doing judo? Otherwise, you could grip fight forever. Mark, that is true. Super true. And that happened in my 2016 Olympic final because neither one of us were going to get an inch. Which brings me to my second point. Offensive gripping only. Do not defensive grip. Meaning, as you're gripping, 80% of your grips should be you grabbing your partner. 20% should be you breaking your partner's grip. You never want it 50-50. You never want to feel like you're always breaking a grip because then you never gain an advantage. You need to learn, okay, listen up here. You need to learn how to grab the gi effectively so your partner lets go. You have to know where to put in your hands to make your partner uncomfortable so that he feels like he can't do anything. So when he tries to better his position and change his grip, then you can open up and move your hands freely. For example, I'm gripping with Ryan and he's just a better gripper than me, right? It happens, you run into people. Sometimes guys are just super good getting the sleeve, okay? They're just super good at it. So I'm gonna give Ryan my sleeve, okay? Maybe I break it and then I come back and he gets it again because I missed my opportunity, whatever happened, happened. At some point, he's gonna get it. Okay, great. But now, my hand needs to maintain position, okay, because that's its job, position. I'm not just gonna rip it off, and then give it back, and then rip it off, and then give it back, and then rip it off. That's stupid, you can't do that. What I wanna do is when he's here, my hand's in a good position. So if I said, Ryan, try to throw me. Go ahead. Defense. Go ahead, go ahead. Give it. Oh, yeah. There, the other hand, defense. Ugh. Defense. There's my pose. There's my sleeve. Hand in good position all the time. Okay? Because he's got to get you. He has to. It's the rules of the sport. If he holds my sleeve, no, oh, come on. Like a good judo player, brown belt. <laughs> when you're in this position, right? If I'm, if I'm trying to get his sleeve, hide your sleeve. Like, who's defensive here? He's holding on, but I can't get him. He's also not throwing me, because remember, that shoulder has a righty stay here, let go, stay here, let go. Look at his right shoulder, because I'm actively reaching, is behind. He's in a left-handed shoulder stance. This is righty, this is lefty. But because I'm actively gripping here, he can't throw me. It's like, why would I bother? I might as well post, wait for it, go get it. Now, we can 
go on to some of my favorite grip breaks. Okay? Check out that YouTube video in case you missed it. Check it out. That's a good one. I like that grip break. But Doug, I'm dyslexic too. Don't worry about it. But hopefully that makes sense. Because even if you post, right, I'm still like actively looking, boom, taking it off because I have good control. Right? I'm just, I'm making sure I'm always working, always working, always working. Don't, like if he grabs and breaks, if, I, if he grabs and I break, boom, it's because I'm actively going after him, always cutting the angle and moving forward. Okay? So let's talk about that really quick. We're going we're gonna to jump to another topic here. We're going to go back to stealing the sleeve first and cutting the proper angle. A lot of people, Travis, what do you think about a Georgian grip? Is this a Georgian grip? Down the back, like, post, throw the hand in. Is that what you mean by, by a Georgian grip? Because we call this a Russian, but you might call this a Georgian, because I think the, the Russians call it a Georgian. Yeah. I like it. I love it. Like it as a, when I fight left-handed players, it's one of my it's one of my go-to grips because when he's a lefty, I steal this front sleeve, I steal this, and then what I do is I shuffle my feet and I pop them in the face with my hand, and then I throw my hand down the back because now I can go big old Soto, big Uchimata. I can go Sumi the other way. Okay, so I like it. It has its time and place. It's a great it's a great solid attack. It's a great grip, as long as you're not afraid to use your hips and go big or go home. You can get picked up pretty easy. Sundown, I'm glad you like it. So Corbin, yeah, we're both in the same book there. Sleep first, because the number one thing you gotta do on the big stage, don't get thrown off the grip. Don't do it, you look like an idiot. Don't be that guy. There are some people who fight Olympic medal matches and get thrown in like three seconds. You don't want to be that guy. But, lefty, lefty. Okay, as a left-handed, right-handed player, let's talk about this for a second, okay? Miles, I'm glad you like it. Hey, if you like it and you're here, subscribe to my channel. Become a channel member. I, I'd appreciate it. Really trying to grow the community here. But, anyways, here we are. So, when he posts as a lefty, okay, all of his throws go in this direction. Okay, unlike a right-handed judo player, lefties have to take this hand and put it on the heat. There are very few throws that a left-handed person can do where this hand doesn't cross in front of his chest. Does that make sense? Like he could he could steal my sleeve or he could post on the chest. And he could do like an old Chigari from like the outside, right? So there's some throws where that's a possibility. But 90% of all throws left-handed players do require you, hey, Jam, thanks for being a member. But 90% of the throws come from this hand being placed on your gi somewhere. It could be here. It could be here. It could be down the back. It could be around the waist. So what we do... Right, American Judo gripping here is we say, you know what? I don't even want to give you the time of day. Left on right, that's complicated. Let's not even give him the time of day. You just come out, we cut that angle, and we steal it. Right? Because now, when he rips his hand out back, boom, look at, pause, look at his shoulder position. He's in a right handed shoulder position instead of a left handed shoulder position. So now, when I steal his sleeve and he rips it out, if I lose it, I can pose, and now when he goes to bring that hand back in, my elbow can play defense. He comes inside, I play defense, and now I can look to attack and throw my partner. Hey, thank you for becoming a member. Nice. I'm glad everybody loves the stuff here I'm doing on YouTube. Makes me feel important. Right? It's kind of lonely just, you know, teaching the same people all the time. But hopefully that makes sense. So that's what she's talking about left on right, right? If we steal that front sleeve, if I can keep it, I can pose, I can go big Sayanagi, big Nicole Sayanagi, big Koshi Garuma, I can come in, I can blast El Soto and take his head off. Sometimes we take his head off just because we want to. Forget the El Soto, just crack him in the head. Always about a option, Bible option. 
But hopefully that makes sense as far as like left on right, stealing that lead sleeve first. The other one that works really well that we do a lot is we do a two-on-one pull by because he'll keep his hands up. Boom, steal it, cut that angle, cut it across. I think I did a YouTube video on that one a little bit ago. But here's a cool secret. Here's a gripping technique that I use a lot in competition. Um, and you know what? It's a little tricky. You catch a lot of jiu-jitsu guys with it, a lot of high-level judo guys too. Lefty, punch me in the chest. Boom, go back, just keep punching. Go close fist, punch, yes, punch. Right here, right here. Because lefties have to punch that hand in, right? So what we do is we go short, sword, and shield, right? As he's doing that, boom, down the back. He punches, boom, punch, boom. Down the back, and now my foot can come in, and I can throw him to the floor, and I can flap him in the face and try to choke him. So he punches, shield, pull, back, leg comes inside, and we throw. Big wow wow, what's up? You left a comment there like you got something to say, but I'm not sure. Is that a question? Doug, I'm glad you like it. Ah, uh, that's not true. You get mechanics, you get like people that work on their hands all day, like carpenters, masons, man, those guys got killer grips. Um, try to try to use your because you have a wrestling background and do mostly no gi. Most no gi can be applied in the gi. The part people struggle with is, well, you know, where's that middle ground, right? So if I have wrestlers in a gi come into my school, here's one of the ones I kind of just give them just for you know argument's sake. So wrestlers use a lot of like two on ones on the ribs, on the tricep. We can do the same thing in the gi and we can really get our partners to move. Let's go left hand stand so jump the move. But let's say he reaches out and he grabs here on the gi, right? Give me a good strong post. You can still rush it, right? I can still pull this by, I can hit it just like I would a normal Russian when I wrestle, right? Boom, pull it in, suck it in, bring him to the floor, hit him with the sumi, hit him with the koji. All possibilities in the gi, just let him grab. No, no big deal. Sorry I went over the character limit. Nice, that must have been a good question. Um, another one that I like to teach a lot of wrestlers that's super simple is he pulls, cross grip the end of that sleeve, take it off, go full tricep, okay? Now that you have two grips, chop him, take it off, and now you can hit him old school judo firings, no problem. Jolly Poppers, new member, welcome to the community. Thank you guys, I love it. Travis, did you say something about mentioning your posture as you were going in? I noticed that you're very straight and what's going through your head as you were entering. Uh, Big Wow Wow, are you, are you talking about the Osoto stuff that we were doing before? I need a soda, man. Whew. Fat guy in smoggy. Difficult times. Difficult times. Hey, back to the Diet Coke today, though. I need like a table back here that I could just like cross it on. Hey, Caleb, thanks. That means a lot. Paul, yeah. Even if you're a lefty, I would go down that same road, right? I would still, I would still kill that front sleeve, pull it by, break it down, maul it. The reason, the reason being is just there are people that have really, really like smooth judo. Like their technique is just flawless. So if you let them hang on to the gear, like if you let a Japanese player like in here and he's starting to like faint and like move and use his feet, like eventually he's just gonna blast you because you're not gonna be able to move anymore. At some point you just stop clinching and then it's just downhill from there. So you wanna do like pattern disruptions while you're doing judo and that's for like the pull buys, the punching, the catching the lead sleeve, the changing of the angles, all that stuff comes into effect while you're on your feet. Big wow wow, I'm a little confused. I was talking about our combo about bending over and pulling back the hips. How do you do that? And how do you stay upright? Hmm. 
I don't remember that. Are you talking about a live video we did a few days ago? Um, yeah, Ono's not the only one that uses that, like, lefty lefty is the same as righty righty. So as a lefty, as a lefty, I'm always going to circle to my right, and I'm going to defend my left, while my right hand is my action hand, and my left hand is now my defensive hand. But the same principle applies. I think the biggest mistake that people make is they don't understand where to put their hand on the E, okay? And what, and what that means, Big Wow, you're going to have to remind me on what we talked about before. I'm a, I'm a little confused. Um, I can't really remember back that far. Too much coffee. But what I mean by that, can you actually face the camera? There you go. Okay. The big thing that we're, that we're talking about here is, is this shoulder here where you would post your left hand instead of your right hand. Okay? Meaning, if I'm here... And I grab his collar like this, it's a little bit of a problem. A little bit. There you go. Because, go ahead and reach my neck. No, my neck. There. You see how you can't see my hand and he can get to my neck and reach back? That's because his shoulder, the actual like rotator cuff, when he throws it forward, my hand doesn't actually prevent anything. Even though you're holding the gi and you're like, but Travis, I did what you said. You didn't do what I said. You just grabbed the key aimlessly and thought you were doing the right thing. What you need to be doing is you need to be taking a defensive grip, which means palm down, more surface area, right? The block and then attacking his knuckles down because there's more flexibility and width, okay? But when I'm in this position, what I do is I take that palm down position and now I put it on his shoulder. While I'm on, so when he reaches, he can't actually get that hand up to my neck. He actually has to back up to create the distance, right? If I'm here, just stay there, don't move, and I'll reach. That's it. Because my hand is on his shoulder. Like, that's as far as it goes. Now I can grab that wrist, I can come down, I can kill it, I can grab his neck. Right? But if I leave it here, down in his chest, now reach, he can reach. So his job as Uke, because I'm actively gripping, right? I'm being offensive minded, is once I post here, he has to back up. There, and now you can see my hand slip down, and then he can throw it. So as he's backing up, it's important for you to stalk your partner, okay? You want to stalk people while you're doing judo. So while you're in this position, when he backs up, I cut that angle. And I'm always walking off that angle so he can never reach, and then I can grab that sleeve, I can punch it down, and then I can throw to my heart's content. Okay, so there's like, like it's a game of inches when you're talking about gripping as far as like too low, too high, too over here, too over there. Like it's just this game changer, right? Yeah, Chris, I can do a breakdown of that gripping sequence. Oh, okay, you're talking about the UNESCO breakdown. Um, I remember that now. You said you'd do a video about it this weekend. Yeah, it's on my list. I've got like 20 techniques I want to shoot this weekend. Uh, there's just been so many good questions coming through the comments on the videos. You guys always give me good ideas because sometimes I do things without really thinking about it. I have said judo for so long. I forget what like the knowledge difference and the gap there is. So I always want to feel like I can answer you guys' question, which is why we're doing like a live workshop, just solely focused on gripping to kind of help alleviate some of those like discrepancies because not everything is in the videos. But you said you'd do a video about it this weekend, about physicality. I was wondering how you grip without reaching slash bending over as you go in. Um, a lot of that has to do with hand positioning and hand placement. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Uh, let me see something. I'll, I'll be right back. Can you grab a belt? I like belts and lines. Here we go. We got a shiny white belt here. 
So you take that, just back up and put it on the ground. Perfect, okay. So we got a line here for golf. This is just to help you guys visually, because the angles are what I was talking about, big wow wow. I'm talking about the angles in which Jack is really trying to attack and what he's trying to do. And basically, when you can keep your posture up and you can keep your hands in a good position, you can attack faster, right? So as a right-handed judo player, in order to create any offense, I have to be willing to step into the danger zone, okay? Which means if this is like a balance beam where a piece in right court, where it splits us right down the center, so we're mirroring each other. In order for me to make a strong attack, I have to transition to the other side with my right leg so that when I back step, I'm square to him and I can throw him in a forward direction, okay? I think that's Aziz. You're welcome for this stream. Seems disadvantaged and dangerous. What's that? Do you like lefty cross grip to right shoulder and then pulling and replacing with the left hand hard? Do you like a lefty cross grip to righty's right shoulder? Are you, Paul, are you talking about left on right? And then pulling and replacing. Oh, you mean like this. And then feeding that in. Yeah, it's it's super useful. It's just it's got to it can't just be your only thing. So a lot of times when we're gonna we're gonna leave the belt here for a second, just because Paul's got a good question here. Um, switch to lefty. And you're talking about like feeding that hand in and then being here. Yeah. So the big the big reason on why I use this one is to create motion while breaking your grip. Remember, we want to we want to use one hand for one job, one hand for the other. So. If my left-handed opponent is beating me to the inside and I don't like it, and I want to deal with it, what we do is a cut grip, meaning I use just my forearm and I chop it and I cut it away. So if he takes that grip, he's got a good strong grip, right, it's stuck there. I come in nice and close, and then what I do is I shrug and I cut it. Then my other hand is going to come over and now I'm going to create some motion. There, and I have a fold, and now I can step in and I can throw, okay? So we can cut grip, collar grab, pokes. The other thing that you can do that can catch a lot of people off guard, hey, Helene's a member. Wow. Okay. While we're in this position, okay, one of the things that we can do, left on right, we're talking about cross gripping to feeding, is cross gripping in a weird position. Because the big problem is, is the gi can be kind of tight to the chest and it can be hard to get sometimes, okay? Especially now that the IJF makes you kind of tuck it in and it stays together all the time. So one of the things that you can do is while your hands are up and you're gripping, is you can actually go like mid-chest. That way when you pull it, you can take your hand out. And now it puts the knee in a position where you can snag that collar really easy. Because when it's in, and he's like this, it, it can be a little challenging. So I never like fully grab the knee and then reach. It's more of like a swipe to a feed. Swipe to a feed. Rather than like grab, pull, and then grab. It's just take it out and then beat it. Snag it. See how I'm, I'm automatically letting go? I hold on to it just hard enough to get a little pull. There. And then I can pull him off his base. Okay? So they're always super quick. Never grab it and hold on to it. Okay? But let's go back to Big Wawa. I don't want to miss that. Okay? I don't want to miss Big Wawa's question. So what I'm saying to Jack is he does tie up. Okay? Jack's a big tie guy, okay? He's an up-and-coming cadet. He's probably going to be number one in the U.S. even in the senior brackets in a couple of years, so keep an eye out for him. But while we're here, for him to do tie right, and his hips are bent, right? He's down here, like low stance, like we're like, yeah. And, and he's in here, and he's gripping, and he's hanging out. For him to do tie he has to actually stand up and come across. There's an extra movement in the throw because you can't, you can't do tie out like this because your hips aren't going to get across. Okay? You could do like a like a drop tie where like you drop down to a knee and then throw, but you know you got to be kind of tricky and fast, and it's never like your go-to. Okay? So what I'm saying is to Jack, when he's fighting an opposite sided player, he's got to stand up because when he's standing up, 
Like, there's a bubble here, okay? When you're a tile person, right? Stand up, yeah, right? When you're a tile person, you want that line, that split, to either be splitting his legs and not your legs to create the proper angle because now you can one step back step into your tile, right? Because the angle has changed. So when you're upright and you're walking and you circle to your right, I can get that shoulder back. Now I can come across and I can hit him with the tile just by using good body positioning and movement because it's going to help set up that throw so that you can really lay somebody else and get a whip. Lay somebody out and get a whip. The other thing that you can do is to create off balance, okay? Meaning, if we split this again, you can keep, you can keep the split between the legs, but you gotta square your partner up in that scenario. So like if I'm in this position, you can touch that leg to get him to step back. Now, I can split and I can go to that forward throw again. So there's two ways of doing it, and either one is okay, but they both require my hips to be forward. If I'm moving inside, if I'm moving inside here fighting for that sleeve and my hips are back, I can't, I can't effectively get close to him. Like you gotta stand up and then come across to hit somebody with a good solid tire. So that's what I meant. I mean, keep your hips up even if you lose, right? Jack's a cadet, so nobody, nobody remembers who wins the cadet world. Nobody remembers who wins the cadet can man. Okay, we barely remember the Olympic medals. I fought the 2008 games, and I couldn't even name all the medals. Right? I think the IJF just had a crazy stat in 2016 where they're like, hey, who's the missing person? I think it was 73 kilos, and I was like, oh, man, like, I, got, I got nothing. I have no idea who took that other bronze. But I digress. So don't get caught up in, like, the nuances of today in winning. Focus on building proper mechanics, because as you're learning and as you're developing, those proper mechanics are going to be what really helps you elevate when you get older and you want to reach those new levels. So you got to be willing to stand up if you're going to do like traditional judo, like tiles. I can bend because my thing, I'm just going to maul you, right? I'm going to get your head down. I'm going to be, I'm going to be pushing you. I'm going to be kicking you, right? I'm going to beat you up physically. Then I'll beat you with judo. But I'm going to rough you up a little bit first. So that's pretty much what I meant there. Alan, is post hand on collar better than an armpit like Koga used to do? Um, Eric, if I miss it, um, Big Wow, just to clarify, it's not off balance. I'm not off balance here. I'm squaring his stance, okay? Because I want to throw him forward. And I'm not going to cut the angle here, right? I want to throw him directly forward. I can't do tile like this and throw forward. I can cut an angle, and now his forward is this way. It's at this angle up here, okay? But if he steps back, to that, now I can throw him forward. And that's what I meant about being physical, because when he's here, like, he's not just going to put that foot back. Like, you've got to kick it and create the angle. Like, you gotta make him take that step. You gotta force it. He's not just, yeah, big wall, he's not enough balance. I mean, we could talk about how to off balance somebody with a natural step to hang with the hands, but that, that's getting a little bit more advanced. I'm talking about just raw positioning. So, like, when you're out here and Ryan's a lefty, and I'm here, like, how do I cut that angle so that I'm on the other side of the line so that I can cut across faster? Okay, we all know the one, two, three step tile and how effective it is. What most of us don't know is how to actually get into the position where we can hit step one and step two before our opponent's reacting. Okay? I think that says Rubik's Cubing. I got a lot of sneaky, sneaky combinations. It's always the feet, right? 90% compared to the plane of his feet. That confused me a big while, I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, so Byron here, one of my old coaches, is in chat from when I was a kid. So, hi, Byron. What's up? From Washington. 
uh, big wow wow. Yeah, so if I'm standing, if I'm standing right foot forward, I want his chest and hips square to me, right? So now he's looking right at me, look no right. Now he's looking right at me, but I'm like a, I'm at an angle to him, where I'm at the 45, which is gonna make my one back step two, okay? And three being the throw. Versus if he's turned a little bit, and then I cut my angle, again, one back step, two, three, throw. Okay, and even if you're doing tile in general, in general, right, if my foot is in the right position, a lot of times to generate power, you still want to make that first step. Don't just do this because you won't have enough power, so you're still going to want to like, even if it's in the same spot or it moves like an inch or two, you still want to hit that first step. Byron, I think I lost your question. I think it had something to do with tall people. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the tall question. Uh, the biggest misconception I think a lot of people have when we're talking about gripping is, well, he's taller than me. So what happens is, they're like, oh, but you grab my D first. And he reaches out, and then you're like, I can't get him. I can't get him. No, no, what do I do? Right? And, and I hear that all the time from kids like, but you're taller, but you're longer. That's because you don't grip. You got to be able to grip. Okay? I can't stress it enough. Look, even if I'm down here, right, and I'm like this new member, thank you. So even if I'm down here, I'm like, Ryan, it's real, right? Get, go ahead, grab my neck. No, thank you. Look at that. Come on. Look at that. He's trying. He's trying. Look at that. Yeah. And I'm still standing. I'm still staying here. Look at it. I'm like, he's a head taller than me. But as long as you stay focused, right, and you focus on the task at hand and not chasing hopes and dreams, right? Like, I hear that all the time from people. Oh, what I was trying to do was, he was kind of tall. So what I want to do was this, like, cool trick I saw on YouTube. Don't do cool tricks you see on YouTube. Basics. Basics win championships, right? Tall people. If Ryan reaches out, reach, uh, reach for my chest. Nope. Yeah, nice and slow. There you go. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. There. Look. Look. Biggest misconception right here. I need to get to the chest. Now, if Ryan is taller, right, and he gets to my chest first, and I can't get to his chest, he's taller, okay, it's because you skip step number one to gripping, kill the sleeve. When Ryan reaches, and I reach slow, 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 super slow. Too fast, too fast, slow. When we're reach, slow down. When we're reaching, our hands cross paths. See, you ignore that first grip, right? If I'm here and Ryan reaches and I catch that hand, right? And I can two on one it and I'm here and I can get to it. No matter how tall he is, I can stop it from hitting my neck, okay? All of that matters. Um, I'm going to say an Ivy guy, uh, Byron, so for me, it's always about staying on this hand, and then what happens is, most of the time, that hand usually goes back so far, because when you're chasing it, now they can throw it, and you can't quite, they can come down on you, right? You pass the problem, like if I'm down here, and he pulls that hand back, like, he gets all that weight down, and he can crush your arms, you don't have a lot of strength there. So... When that happens, cross grip, okay? Because now when that, when that hand's back there, now you can attack when he throws it. Now you can attack when he throws it. Now you can drop when he throws it to that other side, right? There's a lot of different things you can do, but... Good night. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you can come back tomorrow and check the end of this out. We're almost done. we got about 10 minutes left. Oh, I'm getting winded. I'm getting fat. Chris, escaping the big hand over the top, right first strike, crushing, please. Um, basically, um, the, the thing is, A, don't get there. B, 
The post on the chest, when it's in the proper position, prevents it. Hand being in a good spot to kill it, to make sure it can't come up. But let's say you screwed up and it got there anyway. So let's change that one. And let's just say like, Ryan broke it down and he threw that hand and he catches it and you're stuck like this, okay? Positioning is everything when you're in this position. Okay, forward and tight. Bang. Okay, now I'll go here but keep that tight. Look at my forearm, okay? It's diagonally from his shoulder to his hip. I'm not like this at a 90. I'm vertically. So my elbow, my elbow is behind his back, but my hand is across his chest. So I'm covering this whole area. If you watch a lot of Japanese players and people steal their neck, especially opposite side players, they do a good job of this because even though Ryan has that grip, when he goes to attack, I play a natural defense here. It doesn't take any strength. It's just positioning, right? There. And then once he tries to turn, and you're able to look here, and you're able to keep him in play, now you can put your other hand in, dip that shoulder up, and now snap. Boom, comes off, steal that sleeve, bring it back through. So from this side here, he throws that hand and beats you. Okay? Punch away, get that hand up high, dip that shoulder, and now turn. Boom. Steal it when it comes off, hit it when it comes off, and then smash him. Okay, just for doing it. If you can't kill the grip, is it still effective to post on Uke's right shoulder, assuming Uke is a lefty? Yes, this is always option number two. Always. So if Ryan is defending that sleeve and he's not letting me have it, right? Next option is the post on the chest. Because look, his shoulder is now behind his other one. So I can get a good effective post. I can blast him with the old cheek. I can snap and go behind. I can throw from here. Okay, all that is viable. Yeah, Jolly, the, the high elbow from the top um, against righties has been super popular lately just because the leg straps um, don't exist anymore. Because when you were right, let me have a seat. When you were in this position, right, your elbow was the defense. Nick, you sound trying to grab my leg. There you go. Yeah, your elbow was that defense, right? Now what's happening are people are doing this because they'll bend over their own. Because he can't do that. He can't catch you, right? He doesn't know what he's doing because that's before his time. But that's why it works now. Because they can't just go down and pick you up. So it's starting to get modified into the rules. Um, so you can do it elbow high. It, it does work. Uh, it's not great. This the, traditionally is still better, but it, it is an option. Okay. Corbin, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you like the live stream. I know it's late for a lot of people, especially on the East Coast, right? But I want to make sure the West Coast people could make it. Gotta make sure we got, we got to get as many people as possible here, so. Got any other questions? I think I missed a couple on the way up. Um, Tim, so that's actually a good point because our American style judo, our American judo system um, does re resolve or revolve a lot around gripping, but you know, a lot of Europeans, they don't use gripping systems. They kind of let the, let the athletes, like, figure it out for themselves. And it's kind of like to go and get tough and figure it out. I'm personally not a fan of it because it it's like a 50-50 situation. Like, who gets there first and can you recreate it? So the idea of having a system is so that you can do something repetitive and be able to recreate it, right? You want to know the steps that got you that had your poem. Whether it's your poem Sanagi, or the Sanagi, or Shimada, it doesn't matter. But you want to know those steps so that you can recreate against all these different players. Um, when you post with the right hand, my big issue with it, because what they what they do is they try to, as he turns the throw, they try to grab that sleeve right away before they get there. My problem with it is. Great. If you can catch that sleep 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm all for it. But you still, like from my point of view, you're still like, he can throw you. He has that opportunity. 
Whereas when I post on the chest, he doesn't have that opportunity. He has to, he has to problem solve before he tries to throw. So I feel like I'm ahead of the curve. Helene, it is not the same righty, lefty, lefty, righty. Um, the way you frame against the righty versus framing against the lefty, not the same. Um, the good news is, though, is if he is left-handed, right, and he tried to throw that hand high, he can't really get there because your hand can frame. The problem a lot of people have is when they reach, turn your shoulders. Yeah, so let me, let me reach first. No, let me reach first. When you get to here, you start trying to grab it, he turns those shoulders, now throw your hand, just stay like that and throw your hand. There, that happens. And it creates a funny angle where he's pretty much down the middle of your back. And then because that angle is so far, as a righty, you can't get to that sleeve. And then he starts pulling you in, breaking you down, and now you're in close, and now you feel like you're stuck. Right? It's, it's a problem. But, again, that's where like the movement comes into play, where if I'm always circling to my left, right, when he goes to push that hand back, don't pull your hand back, instead of throwing it there, I can defend here so that when he throws it, there, now he's too high, don't throw it, there, and now, let's turn, look at where my hand is, look up, and look that way, there, look at where my hand is, my pinky is resting in his collarbone, okay, look how upright I am. So when my hand is in his neck, let me grab my phone. No, pull him. That one on my back. Now pull me in. Pull me in. Because we use joint stacking, okay? It's kind of like doing a Turkish get up, where look at my shoulder, to my elbow, to my wrist, it's in a straight line, okay? So when I'm standing in a good position and I turn my shoulder, it's locked, okay? Everything is in that perfectly straight line. So when he grabs my gi and he pulls in real hard, nothing happens. But if I change that angle, turn, and now grab, now pull, now pull, 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 there. See how he can kind of, he can get me to tip back and he can break that down because my joint's not stacked. That's why it's important to face your partner and stay strong so that they can't bend it, okay? So when you throw that hand for the first time, when he throws that hand back, I'll reach back and throw it. Yeah, when he does that, this hand has to come up, up, above. Right? Because I want to stack my joints. I don't care that he has it. I care that my right hand is mobile and I have the ability to move and throw. Okay? So again, when I see that hand getting thrown back, I slide it up and I joint stack. Because now when I move, I get my hand lower and I can start getting aggressive and I can throw. Okay? So it's a little bit different. Uh, P. Almo, what sounds silly, and I don't know about tips, I think I missed your question on the way up. Um, I don't mind the Olympic Stadium here to like, grab takedowns. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I like them. I did them a lot. I was upset when they did it, but now I'm used to new judo rules, so, nah, it is what it is. Oh. Uh, Chris, you, even if you have a system, right, there's so many different styles of judo that you're going to have to problem solve. Like, people are going to start doing new things all the time to you. So, you still have to make all these minor adjustments, but you still want um, to have that foundation that you can fall back on that's solid and it keeps you safe and allows you to attack. Because that's the most important thing is you have the ability to throw your partner at all stages, right? Sometimes when we talk about gripping, um, people think of it as a defensive tool instead of an offensive tool. And like I was saying earlier, offense, 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 right? Never, under any circumstances, should you grab the gi in a place where you cannot throw, right? Like, if I come out and I steal the if I come out and I steal this sleeve and I can't throw him, I'm wasting my time, right? So we've developed, like, I do a drop soda to this side, because I have that grip, and if I get stuck with it, I want to be able to throw with it. Uh, right on right, Chris, you're right. It's sleeve, post, cross grip, sleeve. And lapel. So lapel and post, I think, are the same. But yeah, everything is on that side. 
the other one you missed, Chris, that, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, but is a cross grip on the hand because when he keeps his hands up at the righty, you can cut that angle and you can go palm to palm. Boom, you can cut that angle. Two on one because as he's chasing that sleeve, you can hide it, hit it off, and again, the whole time, move it to my left. Move it to my left. Mateus, back with the Georgian grip. Somebody asked that earlier. I love it. As a, when I fight lefties, it's one of my go-tos, right? I steal it here, I poke, I change head position, grab that belt, big hips, big old soda, big old ch I used to love, I used to love this and pick people up. It used to be my go-to back in the day. Yeah, for BJJ guys don't know anything about like gripping tactics and placing your hands just because it's not really relevant in their sport because if you ever get into a dominant gripping position, they just pull guard or jump guard or do some kind of guard thing. So, you don't really need to know that much. But before we cut it loose, anybody's got any other questions? We've got enough time for like one or two more. Cool. All right, we'll call it a night. Thank you guys for stopping by. And if you guys would like to subscribe to the channel, uh, that would, I'd greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Uh, we're really trying to grow the community here on YouTube. But thank you guys again. Until next time, um, yeah, we can do this again. I'm, I plan on doing a live stream every night at 8.30 for some sport, something or another. So check it out. Go to the live feed section. Hit the notification bell so you get a notify, notification when this goes live. And if you haven't done so, hey, Jack is here. Nice. Dad, I'm glad you're learning a lot. Hopefully you like that breakdown video. Um, sorry if I was a little harsh, but that's kind of my nature. Um, just want everybody to get better, improve. You can take it or leave it. It's up to you guys. Um, I appreciate everybody that's here and all the support I'm getting here on YouTube. Makes me feel important. Um, makes me feel like a part of the judo community again. Since I'm off the IJF circuit, it's great to you know give back all the knowledge I've had over the years. But thank you guys. Until next time.